All right, you guys. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. For those of you who I haven't ever met before, my name is Debbie Morrow. Um, I founded the Real Estate Agent Referral Network um, about four years ago. I think we're actually coming up right on the four-year anniversary of our Facebook group. And we have 335,000 real estate professionals in that group. Isn't that super cool? Um, what's even cooler is I watch you guys pass referrals back in there every single day. So I absolutely love that. Um, my partner, Ray, and I founded um, Agent Impact Group. Ray, are you able to unmute and say hi? Hey, guys, I'm driving. Summer with kiddos. But okay, Ray, be nice safe. Meet everybody. Okay, Ray is driving and uh, his um, audio sucks. Yeah, his audio is not very good right now. His, his service isn't good. So um, we're going to move right on to today's speaker. It's so weird. He's muted and still it, I hear it in the background a little bit. Um, our Today's speaker, I, I have to tell you, um, Walton Ray actually wrote um, a book about a year and a half ago, two yeah, years ago, maybe. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll another one else called, we can say it was recent. There you go. Um, uh, they It's called The Startup Agent and um, is really great for helping agents who are new or maybe not so new um, set up their day and set up their business. Um, and uh, I may have mentioned earlier, if you were on early enough, that um, Walt handled one of the Academy uh, coaching calls on Tuesday and talked about open houses and, and his strategy. And I thought it was so cool. And, and um, we got a lot of amazing feedback about it. And so um, I, I really want Walt to share with you today, like, Walt, what is it, what is so special about open houses to you as far as like you're not just trying to sell that house right so so tell us about that yeah thanks thanks for the intro so we'll try to get the, the next book out soon it's going to be called prospecting for your personality type it's based on how we coach agents so that'll be a lot of fun too so the the point of the open houses and, and I'll, I'll do some screen share and i'll kind of within the time constraints that we have kind of walk through what we talked about on the coaching call most people look at an open house and they think, well, I got to do this open house because the seller thinks it's going to sell their house. And they, I want to put my best foot forward. So I'm going to host the open house. And <clears throat> you might occasionally sell your client's house at the open house. It's not very common. It happens once in a blue moon, but it's not very common. So most agents go, okay, well, if I'm going to sit here for two to three hours, why in the world am I here? if it's not to sell the house. And the reality is, if you think about open houses as a lead magnet, you realize that while you can sell the open house with, for your client, and that's wonderful, there's nothing wrong with that, the vast majority of what you do with an open house is lead generation and great feedback for your clients. Whether the market loved the house, they hated the house, the price was too high, the price was too low, it does allow you to look like an absolute rock star in front of your seller, when you give them great feedback, but you have to collect that feedback first. And more than anything, it allows you to have great conversations with qualified buyers to set appointments for buyer consults. And so that's kind of the, the, the mindset and the, the thought process behind the open house. It's not just for the listing. So I'll do some screen share and we'll walk through, but real quick before I do that, a couple quick questions. How many people do open houses? Just drop a yes or no in the chat. How many people actually as a routine of their real estate, how many are out there doing open houses pretty regularly? I see yes, yes, no, always. I do them, yes, sometimes, no. Okay, so we got a mixed bag. Some people are doing them, some people aren't. I like it. It looks like I'd say probably 60, 40 split of those who do them. Um, of the ones that do them, how many of you use a sign-up sheet of some kind, either a hard copy physical sign up sheet or even a tablet that says here's our sign in page sign in okay see a lot of yeses on the sign in sheet that's great how many of you periodically or or regularly 
as you're going back through your signups, you realize that the data they left you is fake. It's it's Joe Schmo. And the email is looking for homes at gmail.com. And you're like, God dang it, I can't even follow up with this client. Right? That's not super helpful. I see, I see some people in there. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So one of the things I like to talk about with the open houses is how do we fix that? Because if our open house is a lead generation magnet, it's part of our funnel system. How do we actually get data that we can use? And so we'll talk about that a little. Yeah, some won't sign in. Exactly. Some will literally be like, no, 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 thanks. No, our, our seller would like you to sign in for security. They don't need my name. I'll be here for five. And there, and it's almost uh, you're butting heads with a potential client because of the sign in. Absolutely. That happens. All right. So let me dive into the screen share. I'm going to talk. Uh, well, before I dive into the screen share, because I know we're limited on time. Let's talk super briefly about prep work. And then I want to talk more about uh, the whole point. So for your open houses, as a general rule, a lot of agents will drop their signs out on Saturday, an hour before the open house starts. Let's go. Your, your open house should start a week in advance. So identify the house you're going to hold open no later than Wednesday. No later than Wednesday. And be specific about the house you want to hold open because it is going to change how many people come to the door. So relatively new listing. And by that, I mean on the market less than two to three weeks, ideally, right? Because we all know the first two to three weeks, everyone who's interested is probably going to see it. So capture that with the open house. Um, relatively populated area. If you've got a five acre a country home in the middle of nowhere that people would have to drive 30 minutes to, a lot of people aren't going to drive to that. And then obviously price right. If you know that the listing is overpriced, it's going to be difficult to get enough interest to get people through the door. Now, if you don't have those listings, don't be shy about asking your fellow agents to do an open house at their listing. Some brokerages are weird about that. And they're like, well, it's a liability. It's actually not. Every single agent has their own E&O insurance. You're not risking anything, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, busy listing agents who have lots of listings will absolutely love someone hoping, holding an open house for them. I, that's how I built my business when I started was I held open houses for the number one agent in my office until I became the number one agent in my office. They will absolutely be happy to, to help you help them market the house. So relatively new house on the market, less than two weeks, ideally, in a relatively populated area and priced properly so that it drives value. That's your sweet spot of the open houses. Put some directional arrows on the main roads no later than Friday morning. Thursday, even better. I don't mean in the neighborhood. You don't have to canvas the whole neighborhood with all your open house signs. The main arteries passing that neighborhood, big directional arrow, open house that way. And all we're doing is catching the eye of the commuters. Because if I'm driving home from work and I know I've got a 50 minute drive again and I'm tired of it. And 20 minutes onto my drive home, I see a giant sign that says open house in that neighborhood. I go, well, that's 35 minutes closer to work. Let me go look that up. Right. And so you got to get that while they're doing their daily grind Monday through Friday. Right. So you got to get those directional arrows out a little bit in advance to give them a mental like, ooh, let me go find that. What's that neighborhood? Palm Springs Coast. Got it. I'm going to go look that up. And that'll actually help drive some some one off traffic to your open house as well. All right. So I'm going to talk about at the open house primarily uh, the marketing you do in advance is super important put it in all of your social media platforms put it in all of your local facebook groups put your open house flyers at the local grocery store cork board at your mechanics waiting room put that stuff everywhere days in advance uh, go live on social if you want to but i'm going to talk primarily about when we're actually at the open house cuz i don't i know we're limited on time we want to do some breakout rooms so i'm going to share my screen I'm going to skip over the one that you're looking at, which is open house prep. I just kind of talked high level to that. I want to talk primarily about two things. I'm going to go down to the bottom of this. At your open house, 15 minutes before it starts, go live on your social media. I know some of you are like, oh, I, don't, I don't like the sound of my own voice. Nobody likes the sound of their own voice. Everyone else doesn't care what your voice sounds like. Go live on social media. Put that live video out all over your platforms. Use the open house to generate more business for you. This is wonderful content creation opportunity. Take advantage of it. Um, at 
right at the right after the open house, as soon as it ends, get everyone that did sign in, and we'll talk about how we do that properly. Get them in your CRM, plan their follow up. Now you'll notice I say announce the giveaway. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let me go to the open house funnel. This is more important than anything. Part of your open house strategy should be capturing data so that you can follow up with people and potentially get new buyer clients. That's really a goal here with our open house and great feedback for our seller if we don't sell it. So there's a conversation flow here that needs to happen. There's some very intentional things that you need to do. But before we dive into that, one of the things I've done and I've found that it works wonderfully to get better feedback and real contact data lose the word sign in from your vocabulary nobody wants to be told oh hello how are you doing you're in a random stranger's house and i'm a random stranger let me tell you what to do sign in please sign in please sign in please they don't want to do that they're you understand the psychology here they they grew up being told by their mom and dad don't talk to strangers now, not only are they talking to strangers, but they're doing it in another random stranger's house. That is not the time to try to get their personal info. They don't know you. So instead of a sign-in sheet where they're like, eh, do a raffle or a giveaway sign-up form. Hey, come on in. Today, we're doing something special. I've got Jackson Stoneworks. They donated a quartz and a granite Lazy Susan and a $100 gift card. And oh, by the way, I had them run a quote for what it would cost to put quartz in this kitchen. Grab a quote. All I need you to do, if you want to be entered into the raffle to get one of these amazing Lazy Susans, I need two things from you. One, sign up on the raffle form so I know you're interested. And two, I'm going to give you a one-page feedback form. Enjoy your tour. Ask any questions at all. When you are done, I would love it if you would take 30 seconds and leave me your honest thoughts so I can provide that to my seller. That feedback form is your ticket into the raffle. Any questions, have a great day, right? That's what we're going to start with. Give them something of value that makes them want to leave their real contact information. And you don't have to pay for this stuff. Right? You can do a, a gift card to your local coffee shop. They'll donate it, I guarantee you. Uh, that story I just told about Jackson Stoneworks donating the quartz and the granite Lazy Susans, that's a real story. That's that's what I did on my last open house. Uh, great company in my market. They do kitchen and bath remodels. They take the excess from their granite and their quartz and they turn them into Lazy Susans so that excess doesn't go to waste. So they gave me two and they gave me literally 10 hundred dollar gift cards to their store i got a dozen open house prizes already set these guys are phenomenal and every open house i do they're like hey you want another lazy susan because i drive business to them i have them build a quote for that specific house i'm doing open free quote it would cost thirty nine hundred dollars to put quartz on these countertops here's an example of the quartz and the granite here's a gift card and i'm giving the i'm giving the lazy susan away for free sign up that value exchange is what gets real data so that you have something to put in your CRM, something to follow up with. So I just want to preface that as we talk. Okay. So when someone comes into the open house, you do want to do a little bit of icebreaker, but understand that they're not ready to talk to you about what they want to buy and what their situation is. And this is our finances. And they don't know you yet. You have to let them get comfortable in their own environment. So the icebreaker questions I have on the slide, just a couple examples. Do you live in the area or are you shopping from out of town? Very low pressure, right? Hey, are you pre-qualified? What are you looking to buy? Do you want to, no salesman stuff. Are you, oh, that's really, are you live, do you live in the area or are you shopping from out of town? The answer to that question can take you down beautiful off ramps that naturally build the rapport that you're looking for before you ever say the word real estate. Have you been shopping all weekend or is this your first open house? Again, super low pressure. And depending on what they say to you might give you an indication of how serious of a buyer they are, right? Have you been shopping all weekend or is this your first open house? No, we live right down the street. We just want to come see what it looked like. Duly noted, you're not a buyer. Yeah, this is our third open house this weekend. We're doing a job relocation and we've only got a week to find the right house before we have to go back to Cincinnati. That's a buyer, right? I didn't have to ask them, what are you buying and how soon? 
but it allows me to start broaching the conversation super, super comfortably. And then take the off-ramps. And what I mean by an off-ramp is when you ask these questions, do you live in the area shopping from out of town? Yeah, we're from out of town. We're only in town a couple more weeks. We're doing some house hunting. And then we got to go back because the husband's got to go back to work. Oh, awesome. What's your husband do for work? Well, he's been at Costco for the last seven years. He, he does the cabinet and installs there. He really loves it. Oh, that's awesome. Is the job transfer to Costco as well? Or did he find a different career? Right. Take those off ramps. Talk about the family. Talk about the jobs. Talk about the kids and why they're downsizing. You never have to say the word real estate, but you will build great rapport in the short time you have to get over that uncomfort level, okay? After you've done that, right? As soon as you've broken the ice, you've introduced yourself, you've got their names, how are you doing? What are you shopping? What's the time frame? Introduce them to your raffle and your feedback form. Be deliberate about this. Hey, come right in. We're doing something really special this weekend. We've got this company offering this thing and we're going to be raffling it off at the end of the weekend. Make it, if you can, something home related. An HVAC company is going to do a complimentary year service plan. A granite company is going to do a complimentary Lazy Susan and a quote and a gift card or whatever. You can get a great coffee shop to donate a $25 gift card to if you want. That, that works. Something of value needs to be exchanged for their information. And then tell them. Hey, listen, I only have two things I need from you in order to be entered into this giveaway. The first one, just jot your name down and your and your number so I know how to contact you if you if you want it. And then two, and hand them a clipboard with an MLS printout of the house and your feedback form. I'll, I'll show you the feedback form in a minute. Hand them a clipboard with a pen that says, when you're done, take your time, enjoy your tour, no rush. I would love it if you would take 30 seconds and give me your honest feedback. And that feedback form that you leave for me is your entry into the raffle. Thank you so much. And then let them go. Let them wander. Let them talk about the house. They're in there. Oh, this bedroom would be great for the twins. We could do bunk beds and this could work as your office, right? Let them get comfortable in their environments before we start pinging them with the real estate stuff, right? Now, when they're done with the open house, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We're going to ask some more real estate related questions now because now we've gotten comfortable. They're more free to, to open up a little bit and talk about what they need. And so we're going to ask some questions before we leave. And we know they're done, right? Because they're walking back to leave the feedback form. Aha, they don't get to sneak out. If you want in the raffle, you got to come back and give me my paperwork. So you'll get that opportunity to engage with them again. Now, ask some questions that are a little bit more real estate specific. One of my favorites is, Hey, how, what do you think? How does this home fit what you're looking for? So super open-ended. And if they love it, they'll tell you. And you can just be like, oh, great. Do you have an agent that's helping you write the offer? But you can go right to it. They're like, this is the house for us. Oh my goodness. Great. Do the deal, right? But more often than not, you get, yeah, you know, it's not bad. You know, the, the backyard's a little bit smaller than we thought. We have a German shepherd and it likes to run or you know, we, we really didn't like this aspect. The kitchen is a little bit narrow for what we're, whatever it might be, right? They're going to ask you those kinds of questions. Oh, okay. I got you. Well, tell me what, tell me more. What else is missing that you really need or you really want? Well, in an ideal world, we would get a backyard that's fenced and it would need to live a little bit more space and we could make the kitchen work, but the backyard's a big deal for our dogs, right? You don't have to ask all of these questions, but they're, they're there as options to open the conversation up for you, okay? One of my favorite questions to ask is right here, this bottom one. In a perfect scenario, how soon do you want to be moved? Again, we're gauging the interest of the buyer. Uh, and they might say, well, you know, we've been shopping for six months. We're not in a big rush. When we, when we find what we want, we'll sell our house. Okay. Or they may say, hey, job transfer. We got three more weeks. We got to do this thing. The last question you should absolutely ask, regardless of how the other questions went, regardless of what they said they wanted, they didn't want, you should funnel them down to, are you working with a great agent like me to help make that happen? Right, whatever they want, whatever they're looking for, whatever size and shape and price, are you working with a great agent like me to help make that happen? If you don't ask that question, the answer is always no. So if they say to you, oh yeah, we're working with an agent, ask this other question. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Do you have a signed buyer representation agreement or are you just kind of talking with them recently? Ask the question or the answer is always, sorry, I can't work with you. 
if they say, no, nah, we bumped into somebody on Zillow and then they mentioned us, you know, this open house. Oh, okay, wonderful. Well, in that case, can I make a suggestion? If they say, no, we're not working with an agent yet. We just started shopping. Oh, okay, great. Well, in that case, can I make a suggestion? Everyone says yes when you offer to make a suggestion. Everybody says yes to that. And the suggestion is really simple, right? We're going to go right here to our appointment setting. The goal is to set the appointment at the open house. So if they say, yeah, sure, what's your suggestion? Why don't we set a time to meet up again in person, review everything you're looking for so I can set you up for success with your new home? Would weekdays or weekends work better for you? Uh, you know, weekdays are busy. The husband's got the thing, but we're only in town one more weekend. Okay, so this weekend would be great. Morning, afternoon, or evening, what's going to work better for your schedule? Awesome. What Afternoon, got it. Would two or four be best for you? We're going to set the appointment at the open house for a follow-on. And then you're going to make sure you've got their info again. You're going to, what's your best email address? In case they left you bad info at the front, you're going to get the best email address. And as soon as it's feasible, whether it's right then, you got other people in the house, maybe it's 10 minutes later or at the end of the open house, if it's super busy, you're going to set a calendar invite with that person to meet them and talk about what they really need so that you can go get more business. Okay. Now, it, let's just use a perfect world scenario. You did an open house, you picked the right house, so all the criteria fell in line. You had eight or 10 groups come through the open house in three hours. You will get at least, if, if 10 people show up, I'll put, I'll put my next commission on it because I've done this long enough. You will get at least eight fully filled out feedback forms with contact data. That is phenomenal feedback to either your seller or the listing agent who you hosted the open house for, which is always great because if we can build more relationships with our fellow agents, that's a, that's a win as well. So when you go back to your seller or the listing agent and you say, hey, great open house, we had 10 people show up. I used my custom feedback form and I got eight different people to leave feedback. Here's what they said. This is what they liked. This is what they didn't like. They ranked this, this, they said this, that. P opinion of price was this three out of five times. Super valuable feedback. Now you get to go follow up with all of those people that entered your raffle and left you great feedback so that they could be entered into the raffle. Okay. Now let me talk a br briefly about the feedback form. Happy to send you guys a copy and then we'll we'll talk this. We'll just open this up for questions. So the feedback form is nothing super amazing. I just built it so that when I started, I've had this for years. When I started hosting open houses for agents. I wanted to make sure I was providing value to them. They were giving me the opportunity to host their open house and I knew I could get business from that. And so this was for the agents that I was hosting. Very thorough, easy feedback. So notice, right? The amazing raffle, right? Whatever the raffle is, it's an amazing raffle. Leave your contact data. And almost always, eight out of 10 times, you're gonna have this all filled out. How did you hear about the open house, okay? You can change this around. You can do whatever you want. You can add social media. If they mark their realtor, that's good for you to know that they probably are working with an agent legitimately. That's probably not going to be one of your buyer clients. But if they say, oh, I found it on the line. A friend mentioned it. I saw the open house signs. Okay, their, their realtor obviously didn't send this to them. That's good to know. Then we're going to just, we're going to get their honest opinion. So we're going to ask, rate this house one to five, just circle. You're going to have pins at the table, right? Because you gave them a feedback form. You gave them a clipboard. You gave them the pin. You gave them everything they need to do this. And they're just going to circle. One through five, curb appeal, condition, floor plan. That's great data for your seller. Hey, listen, everybody who came through the open house ranked your curb appeal somewhere between three and one. We need to do some touch-ups on the front yard. We need to do some planting. We need to do some landscaping if we're going to get this thing sold. Or they might say, hey, the curb appeal was great. Some people love the floor plan. They thought the condition was a little off. Let's talk about ways we might be able to touch that up, right? Or do a credit if you need to, right? Super great feedback. What do you love most? What did you like least? Again, this is great for the sellers to know. Anything I can follow up with you about, right? It's great when that's filled in, right? Tell us more about whatever. Oh yeah, beautiful. They're very interested. And then opinion of value. Now, here's the fun thing about opinion of value. Most people are reluctant to say something negative to you about money, right? So this can be really powerful feedback for your seller. If even two of your 10 people say they thought it was overpriced and everyone else said about right, 
have a conversation with your seller about it being overpriced because most people will not tell you they think it's overpriced. Most people will lean towards, eh, it's probably about right. So if you've got people saying it's overpriced, you can pretty much bet it's overpriced. So that's some great feedback. Um, that's it. That's the whole form, right? It's nothing crazy. It's a one page document. It's easy for them to fill out. Great value to your sellers or your listing agents and great lead capture for you. Okay. And then after the open house, I'm going to go back to this really quick. You've got all these feedback forms. You've got all the people that signed up for the raffle. Add absolutely everyone into that CRM. Follow up with everyone. Even if they say, I have a realtor. Her name is Michelle. She's amazing. I don't need a realtor. Wonderful. That doesn't mean I can't say thank you for showing up. Okay. I'm not going to say, hey, thanks for showing up. Can we have a conversation about buying something? No, I'm not going to do that. But I'm still going to say thank you for showing up. As you have those conversations with people, do your best to keep mental notes, right? Jan and Joe talked about a job relocation. The backyard was a little too small for them because they have a German shepherd. That's going in the CRM. So when I follow up again a week later, hey, how's the pup? Oh my gosh, he remembered I had a dog. That's amazing. Boom, instant connection, right? Add great notes to your CRM. Follow up with everybody. Go live to announce your winner. It's not that the winner is necessarily even going to see it live. You're going to have to call the winner and, and email the winner, but that's an opportunity for you to go into your sphere and highlight the amazing open house you just did and how you're giving away stuff. And it's awesome to work with me. Here's the winner. And then share that in all your local groups as well. Okay. All right. I rambled on here for about 20 minutes. Hopefully that was valuable to everybody. Let me unshare my screen for a minute. Let me ask any questions you guys might have, and then we'll turn it back over to Debbie so we can get some breakout rooms in there. Let me just hit the chat really quick and you guys feel free to come off mute or drop it in the chat. So uh, an easy one is, what's the name of your book again? So um, Walt, go for it. Uh, the name of the book is The Startup Agent. Uh, and then the subtitle is How to Start Your Real Estate Business the Right Way the First Time. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, if you are an Amazon Kindle, what, Kindle, Amazon Prime, Kindle Prime, whatever they call it, it's absolutely free on Kindle. It's like 17 bucks paperback. It's not, we didn't price it to make a million dollars. We priced it to help agents, but it's on Amazon because that's where everybody shops these days. And they're asking about a copy of your slide deck. So I know that we talked about this before you came on. Do you have um, a download or something that you can share I with you? So I have these, as, uh, so all three of these documents, the, the open house prep, the at the open house, the lead funnel and the feedback form, I have those as PDFs. Um, if everybody wants to just drop their email in the chat, so you know, put your contact info in the chat, what I'll do is I'll go back to the chat log because we always save the chat log. I will, anyone who wants it, I will email everybody a copy of, of all three of those documents that I walked through. So you can use them, tweak them, change them, do whatever you want with them. They'll be yours. Someone asks if you can do it on a Google form. Thoughts on that? Uh, I probably could. I have it as a PDF right now, but we probably could do it. No, I PDF. mean, I think they're talking about at the open house. Can you? Oh, um... oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Sorry. Um, You could, yeah. If you're tech savvy and you have an iPad, uh, by all means, take the feedback form. The feedback form is a little more tricky to do. The, the raffle sign up, absolutely, you could do that electronically. The reason the feedback form is a little tricky is because you want them to have that as they're walking around the house, getting comfortable with everything. And they could come back and then fill it out, but they're also going to be really easy for them to not do it. If I handed them a clipboard with the paper, they're going to fill it out and leave it on their way out the door. So you will get better feedback that way. You can absolutely do the raffle sign in or the sign up electronically. Absolutely. You can do that. Yeah. And I think an important thing that Walt said earlier was that he hands them a printout of the MLS listing also. So that is something that they will take with them when they leave the form. So I do think that's important. I'm just checking the chat. Uh, now, one other thing that I didn't talk about, but I'll add it. Okay, a lot of emails in there. We'll get that out to everybody. So don't sweat it. We got you covered. Um, here's the other thing I like to do for the open house. I like to print. It, let's just assume you know roughly a, a really great open house in my market. 10 people are coming through. 15 people are coming through, right? Depending on how populated your area is, right? I'm going to print out the active similar listings within about a five to 10 mile radius of that house. So if this is a three, two, 
1,500 square feet, $400,000. I'm going to go into the MLS and I'm going to find all the active three to fours, 14 to 1,800 square feet, but maybe 300 to $500 or $500,000. I'm going to just get a list of the active listings in that market. And I'm going to have a, enough to give to every single group that comes through. And on their way out, after they've left me the feedback, after we've talked about it, after we've tried to set the appointment, as a last item of value, say, hey, I realize this house isn't the one for everybody. So here's a list of all the similarly priced homes that are on the market in this area. Here you go. And give that to them. Because it's going to have your name and your face and your number on it. And that's value that they can reference back to later if they go, oh, did you know, honey, that there was a house 200 square foot bigger for $15,000 less around the corner? Well, it's too bad they didn't do an open house. Well, do you want me to call Walt and book a showing? So active similar properties, give that to them on the way out the door as an item of value. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a couple pieces of paper that you'll print. That can turn into people reaching back out to you for additional info or showings. Okay. Um, here's a great Jose comment. Says, Can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. Jose, what you got, buddy? You'll have to come off. There you go. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I want to tell you that was an amazing presentation. Um, mm -hmm. If I may just add something to it on the directional signs that I put out on Wednesday, I have a big sign at the front of the uh, house uh, that says Saturday on one side and Sunday on the other side. And it has a date. So when people are driving around, they think that the open house is like on Wednesday or whenever they drive by and they come by there and they see that the open house is going to be on Saturday from one to three or one to five or whatever. They come back. That was the only thing I wanted to add. No, for sure. Absolutely. So putting the house, the open house signs in the neighborhood specifically, just know your homeowners association rules. Some, some you can put in early. They have no problem at all with that. That's a great idea. Some, homeowners associations if you're in one or like why well, you can only have the house out the day of the event blah 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 so just know those rules but it's soon the sooner you can get the signs out the better because traffic driving through especially those main arteries you're going to catch people's eye that by the time saturday rolls around they're not thinking about it but on thursday when they're bored driving back and forth and work now they're thinking about it they'll prep their weekend shopping well in advance so yeah anytime you can get those signs out early that's fantastic Good stuff. All right. Any other thoughts or questions? And then we'll, we got 20 minutes for breakout rooms. All right. Nobody's Hi. coming off mute. So I'm going to go ahead and. Um, Debbie, can I ask you a question, please? Of course, Ken. Yes, sorry. What, what's your, what's your website again? For all the realtors. Um, the, the Facebook group. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. The Facebook. Yeah. It's real estate agent referral network and marketing tips. Real real estate agent referral real estate. network and marketing tips. Okay. And I will actually drop a link in the chat um, while you guys are in uh, breakout okay. rooms. So I'm gonna first of all stop the recording. Um,